Concept cars, a glimpse into the future. You may find them synonymous with outrageous designs, exaggerated interiors, and features that have never been seen in a production car, like this floating key. They're typically revealed at auto shows where enthusiasts and the media ooh and ah at the future of mobility. It's no secret that these one-off designs can be expensive to build, sometimes with a seven-figure price tag. With so much invested in these cars, why does it seem like we rarely see these concepts make it to production? And why does it seem like the coolest elements are stripped away when they do? We spoke with the design department of some of the top automakers to find out why automakers spend millions on concept cars they don't plan on making. First of all, people don't realize that, you know, concept cars, yes, we show them at auto shows typically, and they're there for the media to enjoy. But long after the media is gone, the auto shows around for a couple weeks, and, and the public comes around, and they may not know much about the brand sometimes. And they go, whoa, and they come across this concept car that makes an unmistakable statement about where the brand wants to go with technology. That's Ralph Gilles. He's the head of global design for Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. He's worked on the design of the 2005 Chrysler 300, 2014 SRT Viper, and many more. So vehicles like the Prowler, uh, the Jeep Rescue, and the Challenger, and even the Viper, all of those uh, were concept cars at one time. And what happened there is, is again, the public reacted to them in, in, a, in a visceral way, in a way that says, you have to build that car. Sometimes people will mail us checks, deposits, you know, to, to see this car through and, and very passionate letters. None of that would have happened had concept, the concept not been there. Uh, so when we see that, we, we, we think we might have struck something here. Concept cars can also be used to hype up a model that is actually planned for production. If we have a new launch of a new vehicle in our, in, in our portfolio, we would tease that with a, a specific type of concept that would be a slight exaggeration of the production car. So it would be slightly more idealized. Um, and, it, and of course, that's to g generate uh, interest, but also awareness that this product is coming to market you know, a year or two later. Like the Lincoln Navigator concept, it boasted gullwing doors and steps that deployed when the door lifted open, almost inviting the passengers in. These exaggerated features didn't make it to the 2018 production car, which had standard doors and a single retracting step. But the concept did capture attention and brought excitement for the production version of the car. Those really extreme ones are the hardest, but they would still have a, an influence on the market ahead. You know, so you might not have seen them in the in the, the first couple of years after you first experienced them, but maybe the longer run, you know, ten years down the low, line, maybe they had a, a big influence on the trend of automotive design. Like BMW's Vision Efficient Dynamics concept car in 2009, it was designed to be a high-performance hybrid, balancing speed and fuel efficiency. Five years later, it became the BMW i8. The design stayed intact, but some of the flashy features like the see-through doors and moving grille didn't make it to production. The i8 was a success for BMW, and now we're seeing performance hybrids from almost every brand. But concept cars aren't just to gauge consumer interest or create excitement for a version of the concept that will be released. There's yet another reason. car companies use concepts to test out how new technology might work in cars of the future, even if the exact concept will never hit the market. We are approaching, as I discussed, a more interesting uh, technology innovation era. And then we are trying out uh, future potential to using that technology. Means that we are not just making the show car for the marketing purpose. Take driverless cars, for example. That technology is popping up in almost every concept, yet the technology itself seems so far away. Turns out, these concepts are testing out how driverless technology could respond to the way people interact with cars in the future. According to Volkswagen's Klaus Bischoff, the way people interact with cars today is already different than how they used to. We have ride-sharing services like Uber and on-the-go rental services like Zipcar. Driverless cars could be the next step in the evolution of those services. 
We are at the transition of a new era of mobility. Electric cars will only be the beginning. The concept cars today are the pioneers of this new age of mobility. So, concepts today are paving the way for how we ride in cars tomorrow. Take the Renault EasyGo concept as an example. The designers imagine a future where passengers hop in a driverless car and take them to their destination. Will the car of the future look exactly like this concept? Probably not. But we know automakers are working on a future where these types of services could be possible. I think many of what you see will ultimately make into production. Again, elements, it'll take time. Concept cars are a great way for designers to explore the ideas and, and in a way compare notes because as, as more and more competitors uh, show their work, they travel the internet. But at the end of the day, I think uh, it keeps, it raises the bar. It really does make us go back and, and want to compete that much harder. Concepts are complex. They come in many shapes and sizes and are made for a variety of reasons from testing public opinion to testing the latest technology. Concept cars are the first step in moving the auto industry forward. Without the opportunity to explore innovations and see what other automakers are experimenting with, cars would simply stay the same. <laughs>